Hey everyone, in this video, I will show you how to make this time reversal effect. So here you can see a lot of broken stuff. So here you can see a broken shelf lying on the floor, a lot of books flying around. And here if I press the E key, you can see that the shelf will repair itself and the book will go back into the shelf like this. I can also reverse that effect by pressing the E key again like this. So book will come out and the shelf will fall onto the floor like this. And here you can see a lot of broken stuff like this. And here if I press the R key, you can see that they will all come together like this. And I can also move across this. And here I can press R again so that they will break apart again like this. And obviously you can change a lot of parameters with this. So here for the shelf, I can change the rotation amount like this. So it will rotate this way if you want that. And I can also move the location like this. Or like this. And now if I go here. And now if I press the E key. It will still repair itself and go back to its initial location. And I can press E again to get an effect like this. And here I can also change the book. So here I can change the rotation mode like this. I can also change the speed. I can also change the distance like this. And then there are a lot of other controls. And here also for this I can change a lot of stuff. I can also change the color like this. And all the other controls I will explain in the tutorial. So okay. now if I press play and press E, it will repair itself like this. And here I can press R and it will repair itself like this. And here, since this is a broken shelf, if you don't really want to break it again, you can just replace that with the original mesh like this. And then you don't really have to have all of this polygons. You can just have this one shelf mesh. So you can replace all the broken stuff with the unbroken stuff. So you can save on a lot of polygons after you finish the time reversal. So this is what we are going to be creating today. And if you want to download the entire finished project file, including the sky sphere and everything you can see in this scene, you can support me on my Patreon. And for $5, you can download this and also download almost all my previous tutorials from there. And you can find the link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you are already my patron, thank you very much for supporting me and this channel. So now to make this effect, you don't really need this shelf mesh or the book mesh. Since it is a material based effect, it will work. It will work the same on almost every mesh. So we can create our own mesh. So go to modeling. Then just create this box like this and I will just scale it a bit and scale it down like this and this can be our shelf. So now we will create our shelf material. So for that right click then material M and you can name this shelf and here we can press and hold V and click to get this vector parameter. We can call this base color. And here you can set any color you want here. And here you can set any color you want like this. Or I can set like a dark color like this. And here we can get a node called rotate about axis. To rotate this mesh. So we can connect this to the world position. Now get a vector parameter and call this axis. And get a rotation angle. So for this, we can get a scalar parameter by pressing and holding S and clicking. And we can call this rot and connect this to the rotation angle. And for the pivot point, we get another vector parameter. We can call this pivot. And now for the position, we can get world position node and click apply. And now create a instance and add this in and add this to the mesh. And now here, if I open it up, and now since the pivot is at the bottom, 
if you select the mesh we can just type in the pivot we want so here it is this location so minus 1191 904 and negative 161 and here for the axis we need the red axis which is the x axis so here you can see the axis this red one we want, we want to rotate it on the red axis and so we can give a value of 1 for r and here for rot we can just move this and we can rotate it like this and here if i move this pivot point up to 0 then i will rotate it like this and if i set this pivot point to like 0 then the rotation will be different like this so you can control the rotation using the pivot point so now i will just set this back to the original values now if i set this value to like 0.25 you can see that it is going into the ground like this and now here we can adjust the pivot to make it come up like this and now from 0.25 to 1 you can rotate the mesh like this so here so we can get a lerp and set this value to like 0.25 then we can get a scalar parameter and we can call this alpha 1 and connect this to the alpha and if i connect this to the rotation and set this value between 0 and 1 if i control this value from 0 to 1 you can see that the mesh is rotating like this so this is exactly what we want now we want to break the mesh apart so, so in order to do that we can just select the mesh then go to fracture then create a new geometry collection and save that somewhere and now select the uniform and here you can see the points where it breaks and now fracture that and then we can just convert this to a mesh so we don't really need an active fracture we just need a static mesh so convert that to a mesh and click convert and save that and save everything now go back and then just delete this box geometry collection we don't really want that then what we are left with is this collection like this so you can move this individually and now if i select all of this and if i set this value to like one you can see all of this mesh but the original location of this top portion is actually at the top here and and if, if I, I set this to one now it is visible but if i move down it will be invisible because, because the original location of this mesh was up here so in order to fix this we can select all of this and here we can type bound and set this value to like whatever works for you so i will set this to like 5 and now if i move down it is not disappearing if you mouse over this you can see that it will fix that bound issue but it will come at the cost of performance and shadow quality so you can just play around with these values and whichever works for your project you can set that here so here for me a value 5 will work because it is not disappearing so here it is disappearing so if i set this to like 10 it might not disappear so, so play around with that value and see what will work for you and now if i rotate this i can rotate it like this now i need to scatter this mesh so in order to do that i will just disconnect this for now and i will get a vector parameter and i will call this location and I will connect this to the world position offset and click apply. And here for the location value, if I just type in like 100 or something like that, you can see it is moving. So I can move this uniformly in all the directions. But I don't really want that. I want to scatter this. So in order to do that, we need to give random values to each of the chunks. So in order to do that we can go back to the material and here we can type in object position and then get a divide node and set this value to like 100 then get a frac node and normalize this value 
So, so the value is between 0 and 1. Now if we divide the object position with 100 and then frac it, we will get a lot of small values between 0 and 1 for the for each location and it will be kind of random. Now if I connect that to the base color and click apply, we get a random values like this. So we can use this to scatter the location. So now I will just disconnect this here and connect this here. And here I can just multiply this location with this normalized value and connect this to the world position offset and click apply. So now you can see that it has kind of made it scatter like this. But this isn't exactly what we want. We want it to move in all the directions equally. So in order to do that, since this is made up of colors like you saw before, we can break this into three. And we can remap all of these values between minus one and one. So we can move in every direction equally. So you can go into the positive direction of R and also the negative direction. So connect this to the alpha. And if I set this value to like one, we can move in the negative direction and also the positive direction. So I can duplicate this again and I can do this for the green and I also duplicate this again. And we can do this for the alpha here also. And now we can make a vector from this, make vector three. So we can remap these values between negative one and one. So it will move equally in all directions like this. And now if I click apply, you can see that it is equally moving in all directions like this. I know if you want the rotation also, we can get an add and connect this here and connect this to the world position. And now we can add this here also and click apply. So now it is on the ground, but it is scattered. And now I can change the value to move it apart like this. And I can also change this value. So I get something like this. And now to control all of them, here we can get another alert and connect this to the B and connect this to the add here. And here we will get another alpha. So we will call this alpha 2 and connect this here and click apply. So here if I change the alpha 2 to 1, it will scatter. And, and with this alpha, I can rotate the mesh. And with this alpha, I can bring the mesh together like this. So at value of zero, it will be together and then I can rotate it like this. So if you have any normal issues with this, then you can just you say fix rotate about normal axis and connect this to the normal and then you can connect the axis to axis rotation angle, pivot point, etc. If you have normal issues. So this is exactly what we want. Now to control this with a blueprint, you need to have the first person character template. So in the first person character blueprint, you can go here and type in E keyboard event. Then type in timeline and add a timeline and open it up and add a track and set the value here to zero and time to zero also and shift click and set the time to 5 and the value to like 1 and normalize this and this is what we want and now get a flip flop and connect this to play and connect this to reverse so when we first press E it will play and then if you press E again it will reverse the timeline so here we need to control this alpha and also this alpha so now we need to replace these two with a parameter collection. So we can go to the content browser, right click, then go to materials and go to material parameter collection. And we can call this PC and time reversal. Then open it up, then add an scalar parameter and we can call this alpha. 
Now we can go here and here we can type in collection parameter time reversal and change this to alpha. Then connect this to the alpha here and also the alpha here. And if you want, you can just collapse this. So select all of this and just collapse it to a node and click apply. Now we can go back to the blueprint and here we can type in set scalar parameter value and we can select our time reversal collection parameter and change the parameter name to alpha and connect this to here and click compile and if I press play and now if I press the E key you can see that it is breaking up and coming down like this it's very slow but this is what we want but now we need the mesh to first combine then rotate so in order to do that there is an easy solution we can go to the material so here get a multiply node then set the value to like 2 then connect this here and subtract this by 1 and saturate it and now connect this to the alpha and then saturate this again and connect this to the alpha here so what is happening here is that since this value is now 2 since 1 into 2 is 2 we are subtracting 1 from that so first this alpha will finish then this alpha will finish since it is not subtracted by 1 so now if I press play and press E key you can see it is coming down and it is falling apart and now if I press E it will come by and rotate back up like this so we want this to be broken when we start so for that we can just 1 minus this and we want the rotation to be really fast so in order to do that we can just power this with a value of 10 so this power will create a curve like effect for our rotation so, so now if we click apply we can see a new effect so now if I press E to rotate like this then rotate really fast so if you want the rotation to be even faster you can set this value to like 100 or something like that now if I press the E key it will combine like this and rotate really fast so this will be our shelf now let's create the book so here I can set the alpha value to like 1 to see this like this now we can create our book which is easy so create a model and we will create maybe a cylinder this time for our book and then we can scale it down a bit to like 0.5 and this can be our book now let's create the material for the book so right click then material m underscore book then open it up so here we can also give a color then for the movement we can get a parameter and call this location and connect this to the world position offset then now create a instance and apply that to the cylinder now if i open the instance i can move it in any direction i want So I will move it negative 400. Now I want to make it move up and down. For that, I can get a time node. Then I can get a multiply. Then get a scalar parameter and call the speed. And now get a sign node. So as the time value increases, this sign value will oscillate between negative 1 and 1. So we can have the up and down motion. So now if we multiply this with a vector parameter called up and now we will add this with the location like this. So now we can change the speed to like 1 and the up to like 1 for B for 100. So it will go up and down like this because 
the blue value is the up and down direction here you can see it on the arrow here so i can also give this value to like 20 so it will move like this for like 100 so for the up and down we can just set this to like 100 and we can set the speed to like 0.3 so we have this motion and now if we get a lerp and connect this here and get an alpha by controlling this alpha we can move this cylinder like this this will also work on this book so if i get a book mesh from here and bring it here like this and i can add this new material and if i increase the alpha it will move like that now we need to add some randomness to this so in order to do that we can go to the shelf material and we can get this collapse node and then here and then we can go here we can get another add and connect this to the a here and connect, and connect this to the world position and for b we can get a vector parameter and call this direction and then we can paste it here the collapse node we can yeah. rename this random and then we can just multiply this with this and connect this to b here and click apply so now if i set this value to like one and for the direction i can set this to like 100 and 200 here it will take on random directions like this and for the motion one more thing we can do is that we can mask this value and by just r and we can just add that here so it will give a random offset to our motion so they won't all move at the same speed so if i set this to zero if i just duplicate this it is moving like this because we need to go here and get a lerp and connect this to b and connect this to b here also and we can get another alpha and call this alpha 2 and set that to 0 now it will stay there and if i set this alpha to 1 it will have some random offsets so set that to 0 and we can just duplicate all of them like this and if you set both of these values to like 1 you can see this random movement And we can see the books moving so now we need to control this with the alpha like this also so in order to do that set this value to like four so right now we need to control two of these lerps and also two of these lerps so that means we need to set this value to like four then we can copy this and also set this value to like three and here subtract this and set this value to two since first we need this to happen then this to happen and after that we need the book to move so come back here and paste it and do a subtract and saturate this and connect this to the alpha here and here we can get the multiply from here and saturate this so it won't go above one or below zero and connect this to the alpha here now if i click apply and now if i set the value to like zero it will be in this stage and now if i press e it will combine then go then the books will go into the shelf so if you want to make the book go faster into the shelf we can go to the book material and here after the saturate we can get a power node and change this value to like 55 so it will go really fast into the mesh so, so now if i press e it will combine and the book will go faster and if i press e again 
first the book will come here and the mesh will separate. And if I press E again, you can see the reverse happening. So that's it for the book. So now let's see what happens if I add the instance I created to the original shelf mesh. So I just duplicate the instance and I select all of these collections and add both of them like this. So we need to add the shelf instance. So I will just duplicate that and add that. So here one issue is that our pivot is in the same. So if I bring it down and go to the pivot location, here we need the pivot of this position. So we can see that here. So I will type that in. So now if I press play and now I can see the collapsed mesh and if I press E, it will come back together and it will work the same. So here, no matter what mesh you are using, it should work the same. So I can control these values. So it doesn't really matter if I use this cylinder and this box for the tutorial, it will just work the same on any mesh. So if I press play and go here, you can see it is coming back like that. Now we will create all the scattered objects here. So they kind of have a different look like this. And now we will make this. So now let's create this world effect. So for that you need this mesh. In order to get that, you have to go to add, then go to content pack then add third person character you can get it from the mesh folder in the character folder so now open up one of this and then make a static mesh and save it and then you can open it up and then go to it and we can also make a box so go to modeling then box then add a box and we can scale it like this and put it here like this and now we can also add our mesh we can rotate it a bit like this and then we can scale it by 5 so we get this big mesh now we will create the material so go to the folder then right click material m then we will call this world then open it up then here we can give some texture. So go to start content, then texture. We can get this rock texture and bring it in. And we can connect this to the base color. And then we can convert this to a parameter. So we can change it in the instance. So I will call this text. Then we can get a vector parameter. And we can call this MSC color. Then connect that to the MSC color. Then we can go to our shelf material and we can copy the collapsed nodes and copy that and paste it here. And with this, we can get a multiply and we can connect this here and we can get a vector parameter and we can call this location and connect this to the multiply here. Then we can connect this to the world position offset and click apply. Now create an instance and we can apply this to both of the here and also here. Now if I open this up and now I can change this value so I can move them around like this. So in order to break them we can use the mesh fracture tool. So just click this and go to mesh fracture and go to fracture here and create a new mesh collection and then 
uniform and just fracture it and then here you can convert this to a mesh and save it and we can go back and delete the collection we don't really need that and we can select all of them and set the bound to 10 and now if I change the value of B you can see that they are splitting up at different rates so if I change this to 400 it will look like this I will set this back to 0 now we can select the statue and then go to the fracture tool again create a new collection fracture and to mesh and save that and delete the collection again but not the static mesh and select all of them and here change the bound to like 10 again and now if I change this value to like 100 you can see that they are all moving in different in different directions like this so now they are splitting apart and here if I get an alpha and connect it here and connect this to the world position and if I get this alpha plus one minus from the shelf material and paste that here and connect this to the alpha here and click apply and now if I press play here I can press the E key so they will join together like this and I can walk across it here if you want more speed you can just multiply this by 10 and then saturate it then we can power this by 4 so it will be really fast towards the end now if I click apply here if I press the E key you can see that it comes together faster towards the end like this so if we add multiply before this the effect will be a bit different multiply and saturate before 1 minus here if I press the E key it comes back very fast like this so this is what we want now we want it to move up and down so in order to do that we can just open up our book material and we can just copy this part this collapsed node we can call this up and down and we can just copy it and bring it here and we can connect this to the R and connect and connect this here and we can add this here to this one and then connect this here also now if we go into the up and down here for the up value we can give a value of like 50 and speed we can give like 0.4 now if I click apply it will be moving up and down like this so now we need to give some rotation to it so in order to give some rotation to it we can go back to the material we can and here we can right click and type in rotate about axis node and here for the normalized axis we can just normalize this and connect this to the rotation axis and for the rotation angle we can get a multiply and connect it here and we can give it here and we can get a scalar parameter and we can call this rotation speed and set this value to like 2 then for the pivot location we can get object pivot location so type in pivot and get object pivot location and here connect this to the object pivot point and for position we can get object position 
and connect that to the position. Now get another add and connect this here and connect this here and connect this here to B and click apply. Now if I press play and here if I press the E key, it kind of come back together like this. So now we need to add some more randomness to it. So now to add more rotation, we can just break this by three and we can multiply this value by this one and connect this here. And now we can get a power node like this and connect this to the multiply. Then we can get a lerp and connect this to the exponent here and connect the green value here and change this value to like two and change this value to like 20. And now we can click apply. Now if I press the E key, you can see a different effect. But maybe this we don't really want. So here, we can go here and delete the power. We don't really want that. So connect this back to the multiply. Then here for this multiply, we will give a value of 2. Now press play. And now we get some effect like this. We need to add this value to this one and connect this here and connect the alpha here like this. Now for the rotation speed, I will give a value of 20 and now we can click apply. Now if I press EG, you can see it's rotating like this and coming back like that. So, so here I can go to the rotation speed on the instance and change this to like 5 and if I press play and if I press the E key you can see that it is rotating and forming itself like this and if you want some speed for this you can go here and you can power this value by 20 so now if i click apply it will give an effect like this so now it's really slow and if you want to make it speed up since we added this before the one minus we can just give a value of 0.1 and now it will be faster So now the rotation can be faster like this. So if you want some randomness here also, we can go inside here. We can add one more output. And for point two, we can just directly connect the B here. And maybe we can connect the green here and click apply. Now come back. And now we have a second pin and here we will get a lerp and we can connect this to the alpha and connect this to the exponent and here we can change this value to like 0.3 and change this value to like 20 and now click apply. So now if I press E key, We get an effect like this. Maybe change this value to like 2 and this one to 0.1. Okay. So now if I press the E key, you can get this different kind of rotation like this and the statue forming back. And now we can just select this parameter collection and set the alpha to 1. And now we can just select all the box mesh like this and then copy them like this. Alt and drag so we can copy them and we can also select the statue mesh and select all of them. Maybe, maybe even group them 
and then we can just duplicate them here and here. Now if I press play, and now if I press the E key, before that we need to set the, we need to reset the alpha value to zero, so it will still be broken when we press play. And now if I press the E key, you can see that it is forming like this. Now, now if you want, you can select this mesh and select all of them. And here for the second instance, we can just duplicate this and add this here. And for this one, we can give an MC value like this or maybe some other color. So now you can see that it is glowing in the inside and now if I press E, it will look like this and we can still move through it. So I think that's it for the tutorial guys. Thank you very much for watching. And if you want to download the entire project file, you can support me on my Patreon.